Hey everybody, welcome to Black and Azul. I'm Charles. I'm Joel Soria. Nice to meet you. And Wando, when are you breaking the record? Well, we'll get to that. It doesn't really matter. But anyway, uh, thank you for tuning in. This is the first show. Um, we're pumped to be here. Um, and we want to talk about, of course, Matias Almeida, a big transformational change happening in San Jose. And we want to talk about ourselves and why we're doing this show. So absolutely, let's do it. Yeah. So, you're here, we're here, we're actually doing this. Finally. Yeah, it's been a, a thing in the making, right? Yeah, it has. Um, obviously delighted to be here with you, delighted for this new era. Um, I, I personally think this was a long time coming. It should have been done much earlier. But the good thing is that we're here. And for those viewers who don't know who I am, I'm Joel Soria. This is my third season covering the San Jose Earthquakes as a beat writer for Quakes Epicenter. I am delighted to be doing this with you, Charles. You want to tell them a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'm Charles Wolin. I've been covering soccer in the Bay Area for about 10 years. I commentate college soccer at USF. I also write for sfgate.com about soccer and soccer culture, and also commentate for SF City FC in San Francisco. So we are absolutely, you know, jazzed about this whole thing. But in order to make this, you know, what it is, I think, you know, the Quakes kind of had to have the season that they had last year where it was pretty bad. Not I mean, so good, yeah. They've made a big, big change um, with their coach as well, Matias Almeida, and it's a huge ordeal. I mean, it's not just some sort of, you know, here's strawberries and here's some yogurt and here's a little topping for your strawberries. I mean, this is the whole banana split here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, like I mentioned to you off air, this... 2018 was a blessing in disguise if you look at it in in that way you know if Mikel Stare wasn't you know I guess quote unquote fail if the earthquakes weren't to have the season that they had we probably wouldn't be here right now <laughs> right that's just the reality of it all and obviously you viewers at home don't it's, it's not us it's Matias Almeida right that really matters Matias Almeida is now in San Jose it's it's a transformation period, a new at the start of a new era, a new era call for new beginnings, and this is also a new beginning for us, and this is also going to allow us to you know continue the objective and um, insightful journalism that I think we've been doing uh, for the past few years. I know you have, I think I have, or at least I've been trying my best. So and also to alleviate some of the the gaps, right, that this this organization has in terms of coverage. We're here to expand that. We're here to elaborate on it a little more via, obviously now, YouTube video and all this good stuff. So I can't wait to start. My goals for this show are to make this thing relevant. I wanna see Bay Area soccer grow in many ways. One, we have a glorious opportunity to, to be able to do that with this show. And I'm here because I, I wanna be a part of that uh, in any way that I can. And I think that with a show of this magnitude, Black and Azul will be able to, to do that and be able to expand the reach. You know what, Charles? I think we're gonna get the question quite often. So why did we choose Black and Azul as the name of our series? And I, I think personally, the reason why we went with this is because it's a reflection of San Jose and the greater community, right? Where we have you know, the Spanish speakers and we also have an English speaking community. I agree completely and I'm I'm proud to have that and I'm proud to have a bilingual name as part of this program as part of this show as part of something that we can showcase to folks that are tuning in whether they're a hardcore fan whether they're a casual fan whether they bring their family to every game whether they're a season ticket holder whether they're a Mexican American that's just found out about the quakes because of Matias whether they're someone that's been following the team since 1974 right. or they're crazy George banging on the drum <laughs> that's what black and azul is it's it's all encompassing it's it's everyone all together um, and we want folks to be able to interact with us and and uh, be part of this too uh, so that we'll get to kind of the Twitter part later where we'll ask folks to give us questions that we'll answer but that's where I'm at with it yeah, and I do want to say that we will be incorporating Spanish content into this show on a weekly basis, and we will have 
guest, hopefully in the future, who will be Spanish speakers only. And obviously we'll do the translation part of it, but we want this show to be as inclusive as possible. Well, let's get started on today's lineup. Let's start with the big coaching change. There's been lots of buzz about this all across the soccer community. Not as much as we'd like to see right here in San Jose, California. However, this is not just, again, uh, some sort of big deal. It's, it's a ginormous deal. The Quakes really landed the guy that's going to bring this team into a new era. And, and there's been some really good reporting about it as well. And, you know, this is exciting times for this side. It's, it's a totally, um, you know, big thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, Matias, you know, the arrival of Matias Almeida isn't only going to bring uh, prosperous times for San Jose on the field, but also off the field, right? Um, and like we said, it, it's a blessing in disguise. If 2018 weren't to happen, Matias Almeida wouldn't be here. And what does Matias Al bring a, Almeida bring with him? Well, he brings obviously a massive coaching staff with a lot of expertise, a lot of uh, experience, but he also brings a new set of fans, a lot of Chivas and Liga MX fans who will be flocking into Avaya Stadium. So a new atmosphere, a new identity for the team. And we can already see it, right, with uh, the Earthquakes marketing. They're starting to target Vamos Este, the new hashtag. I think this it's very evident that that's the new direction that the, the club is taking now. Uh, the new and much needed identity, uh, one that probably should have came about a long time ago, but you know, it's better, it's better that it's here now than not being here at all. Yeah, and why not seize the opportunity when you, when you have the chance? I mean, this is a guy that's won at all levels, been able to bring up River Plate, brought up Banfield, as well as he's won multiple trophies with Chivas before coming to San Jose. So it's a bit carte blanche for him now in San Jose, but he does come with all of these other trophies in his bags as well that he's able to 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 put out and say, you know what, I, I've been able to do this job here, I've been able to do this job there, and I can do this job here as well. And, and guess what? Let, let me try this as well. So uh, it, it's the splash that a lot of fans want to see, and it's the splash that hopefully will allow this team to kick on and move up the table, so to speak, and, and get some results, get noticed by the rest of this league, because the West Coast, when you think about it, when it comes to this league, there's some really good teams that are very relevant that are on the map. And when it comes to San Jose, it, there's a little bit of that, that spot there where you'd like to see it be quite greater. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I think the the special thing of Matias Almeida coming to San Jose are the motives behind his arrival, right? And he's made it quite clear time and time again that he's not here, um, you know, just for a six month period. He's here for a long term project. And obviously this this was a, a big part of this. Uh, you know, the reason why Almeida is, is now in San Jose has a lot to do with uh, the Quakes general manager, Jesse Fiorinelli, who was really able to, uh, you know, connect with Matias Almeida on a deeper level, more on a personal level, you know, with values and, and ethics. And, you know, that is essentially what was able to bring Matias to San Jose. Well, obviously, aside from the project, which has a lot of academy, a, a big, big academy youth focus, um, you know, they really want to touch touch base on the academy to to a greater level there is so much untapped talent in the bay area as we know uh not only in san jose but in the greater bay area places like oakland san francisco and even down south in the the monterey bay area peninsula places like watsonville salinas santa cruz etc the list goes on there's a lot of talent here um the earthquakes are obviously trying to get this this new era going and they couldn't have chosen a better better person and a better group than you know Matias Almeida and co. I agree completely and the preseason has been pretty rigorous there's been lots of reports coming out of how the team did in Cancun as well as a 3-0 loss to Reno and then a 3-0 win against LAFC let's let's 
kind of back up and talk about each one of those as it as it as it comes. Let's start with the LAFC victory from from the other day. Goals from Wando, from Vaco, and um, Erickson as as well. Um, pretty comprehensive performance uh, from what we saw from the report. Uh, good possession from the side as well. Created chances and you know a nice side to be able to get that victory in the preseason. Yeah, I think I think it. It shows what Ma the the that the style that Matias is trying to implement is finally coming along, right? It's always it's always going to be a process. It, it's it's definitely a process, and the match against Reno, I have to say, now looking at it in retrospect, was probably an outlying performance, right? I think we both can agree on that. The fact that the team had two grueling weeks in Cancun with very you know drastic weather tropical weather that the players are obviously not used to having to to train there for two weeks uh double sessions each day they i believe they only had like about two days off the entire time they were there to fly to reno and play the next day in altitude in 30 degree weather against a team that was already acclimated to the elevation and to the weather uh probably factored in and was the reason why the Quakes showed pretty poorly in Reno. But now, you know, moving on to the game against LAFC, uh, obviously we weren't able to watch it. I don't, not, no one r really was unless you were at the stadium because it wasn't live stream. But, you know, the Almeida, at least from what we were able to get from the reports, certain uh, beat writers who were present at LA, uh, Bank of California Stadium, is that you know, the Matias Almeida's style is starting to pay dividends now. The Earthquakes have possession of the ball. They're also, you know, battling on both sides of the ball. And first, I mean, the, the major piece is that, you know, the Earthquakes are now finally able to score. They're able to get and generate chances, which is what Matias Almeida's style is really known for is, uh, you know, hard worth ethic, uh, high, high work rates and dangerous within the box or in creating chances and goals. Well, if you're creating chances, if you're working at a high level, and if you're fit, which in my opinion, this team really wasn't that fit last year, you're not gonna be able to compete to even serve balls into the box to be able to score. So for me, just seeing that on the match report was terrific and hopefully they keep it going. Hopefully we'll have other good news <laughs> to report right. from the Seattle game from this weekend. It just kind of keeps keeps continuing, but you know, based on the 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 training camp in Cancun and Tom Marshall's reporting, we learned that there's some cool little tactics and other little ways that Matias has been getting through to the team, as well as training. So riding bicycles to training, being able to you know speak specifically to players. I mean, he was a, an insider there doing his thing and watching Matias actually train this team. And the translator is a terrific translator as well, uh, both proficient in Argentine Spanish and American English. And so obviously the translator has a has a big job to do in making sure that Matias's yeah. ideas are put forward in, in the right way, right? No, absolutely. There's there's a lot of things that need to go right in order for the greater picture to, to, to come along. And um, I, I think the earthquakes and Matias Almeida are conscious that what they have assembled is going to pay dividends in the long run. Like I said, it's it's a long term plan. Uh, things aren't going to you know be off to a great start initially. There might be some roadblocks here and there, but you know they're in a good position right now. Um, they're going into this final preseason game against the Sounders on Saturday with. A, a, what I think is a big preseason victory against uh, you know an LAFC side who obviously um, had stole all headlines last season in terms of teams on on the West Coast and Bob Bradley has made that team uh, you know one of the best obviously in the league so a good win um, and yeah to talk about the like the idiosyncrasies that have been going on within the team, the stuff that Matias Almeida has been trying to implement more on a on an ethos level, right? We we're talking about the the shuttling or riding bikes nice. to the it's training it, yeah. pitch, and you know dining, having the Spanish speakers and the English speakers dine together to to create this more of a communal fe feeling. 
Uh, you know, these are the small things that really make Matias Almeida, Matias Almeida, or at least those are the things that elevated Matias to the next level in when during his time uh, in Guadalajara. So another factor of this is who's going to be the main striker in his system, right? So Wando scored on the weekend. Wando, part of this team for 11 years. Wando, his name synonymous with San Jose Earthquakes, 36 years old now, two away from breaking the all-time MLS scoring record. And then there's Danny Hooson, who scored many goals last year, top marksman for this team. Who's going to be the main striker is really the question that, you know, you, we, we've been talking about here and a lot of journalists in, that cover the team have been talking about here. But how could you not start Wando? The fact that he scored against LAFC, he's a couple away from the record. He's the guy, I mean, you're not going to get you know, four more, five more years out of him, you're probably only going to get one to three more years out of the guy. And so why not now? Yeah, I think uh, this is obviously a, a, a glaring top talking point heading into this season is where is Chris Wondolowski going to fit or where is he going to fit in Matias Almeida's system? I think prior to the preseason pre actually kicking off, a lot of people had said, well, maybe Wanda's not going to really find his place in Matias Almeida's system. Maybe he's going to be a, you know, a super sub. But, you know, with a week or two weeks left in this preseason, I think it's fair to say that Chris Wondolowski has cemented himself in the Matias Almeida starting 11. Um, obviously, Danny Husen being absent for the game against Reno due to him uh, finishing his green card situation back in his in, in his home country of Holland, you know, didn't really put him in the best position. And now with Chris scoring against LAFC and I, like I said, really convincing Matias Almeida that he still has it in him even at 36 years of age, puts us in a very interesting place where you have last year's most productive player in Danny who's in trying to find his way in the starting 11 and you have Chris Wondolowski heading into the first game of the season with only two goals to break the record in position with him being in the starting 11. And not to mention uh, you know further on this topic is Wando is heading to the twilight of his career. He's also someone that embodies the spirit of the San Jose Earthquakes over the last eight to ten years with this blue-collared, hard-working, gritty striker and a, a, a guy that was never really supposed to be the guy and ended up taking the stardom and saying, you know, not not in a flashy way or like a Hollywood way, but, you know, just gently going about his, his work every single year in Major League Soccer. And so how Matias Almeida also balances kind of transitioning gently and slowly Wando out one day and bringing new guys in and also allowing him to finish the way that he's meant to finish with a uh, with uh, you know great pride on his back for 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 the patch and um, ha have the fans salute him in the way that he deserves to be saluted absolutely uh, I think if there's anyone who really understands and appreciates hierarchy it's Matias Almeida um, you know a person of values he goes by his Bushido code where he treats everyone equally but I think he still senses or he does sense uh, Chris Wondolowski's fighting spirit leadership and just overall you know knowledge of the game and overall knowledge of the San Jose Earthquakes and I'm going to go one step beyond with this is coaches in the past that have not really included Wando into the starting 11 or had him right there almost as an assistant or the first guy off of the bench. I think that's been a downfall for any coach uh, in the past that's that's been with this team because of the fact that he gets it. He's the guy that that understands the work rate. He's the oldest player in the locker room. He's been there the longest. I'm not going to say, let's call them the San Jose Wondolowskis. However, he's been able to stamp his mark in such a marvelous, beautiful way that the team is still his, and he's still a voice uh, that carries his weight um, more than most. And that's something to be to be spoken for and spoken about. I mean, in the locker room, you just said, I mean, you know, leaders lead. So, you know, I, I think in the in the past, 
some coaches that haven't incorporated the guy, that's been a been an issue. And so I'm glad to hear that Matias is understanding of of these types of things. I mean, what do you think here? I mean, nothing set in stone, right? I think we can talk about theoretical situations here, but I guess what I'm trying to emphasize is that from the looks of it, it looks like Wondolowski is going to be a starter come March 2nd against Montreal Impact. Uh, but you're right. I mean, this is this is obviously a big positive for Wando, who probably thought he was going to see a lot of bench time in 2019, which is still possible. You know, you don't know what, what the season's going to bring, but things are off to a good start. He has Matias Almeida's confidence and, you know, vice versa. And that's an awesome thing because of the fact that he's a good guy. And I think that fans in San Jose get that. He's always been a hard worker for this side. He puts the team on his back when he needs to. And he knows the importance of what it means to wear that patch more than any other player that I've seen in the last 15, 20 years with this with this side, besides Joe Cannon, of course. But with that being said, uh, let's transition to talk about um, Mr. Erickson, Magnus Erickson, and to see I mean, let's let's chat about this. It, it, you were kind of saying off air that this could be his big year, but also at the same time, there was rumors and reports that have been kind of swirling that he may be transferring back to another side at some point. And also, given the fact that he was signed during Mikel Stare's time, is was he a Mikel Stare signing, and is he immediately out of favor with Matias Almeida? Does he get a chance? We've kind of seen him get a chance. So there's a lot of different factors going into... Magnus Eriksson for the rest of, you know, 2019. Charles, I never said that it's going to be his year. I said there's a probability that it could be this year, or will it be Eriksson's year in 2019? Now, Eriksson had this whole rumor saga behind him the last couple of months with reports coming out of Sweden that he could potentially make a move back to Duchgarden, if I'm pronouncing that correct his club back in Sweden where he erupted for 15 goals in 2017 and was a co-golden boot winner. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's some pressure on Magnus, obviously. He's the lightning rod for criticism for the San Jose Earthquake fans. I think, you know, they took it out on him pretty badly over the last couple of weeks. And, you know, fans back in Sweden of Magnus Eriksson uh, didn't like it so much. He's, he's a potential international player for them. It was reported that Magnus cost $1.4 million back in January of last year. Definitely a Mikel Stare signing. Didn't really work out so well for him. Had Potentially had an option to go back to Sweden, but there's big money tied to him, right? The big transfer fee. And now he has he starts off from, from a clean slate with uh, Matias Almeida. If there's any player, I think, in the locker room that really has to prove themselves this year, it's Magnus Eriksson. He has the potential. He has some competition, but not as not as uh, you know rigorous competition as other players do in in certain positions, like you know the goalkeeping core and some of the center backs. Seventy minutes against LAFC, a goal. Could this be Magnus's year? I think it's going to be Magnus's year. He's a hardworking guy, blue-collared ethic. He he is part of the ethos of this team, the ethos of this club. I think it's money well spent. I just think he needs another year to integrate as well. And to be honest, yeah, the fans can give him a little shtick, but I think he'll perform. I really do. So we'll have to see if how he continues uh, in the lineup. And there's a final preseason game this Saturday against Seattle Sounders where he gets a chance to prove himself and same thing with the rest of the squad. So we'll have to see uh, what happens. Kickoff is at 1245 at Avaya Stadium. Now transitioning to the final kind of piece of our show here. It's the International Roundup. I'm particularly pretty jazzed about it. This segment will focus on a player that's done pretty well for their national side or deserves to be in their national side. We're going to kick it off with Mr. Homegrown, Nick Lima. And why not? Come on. Yeah, he's been playing out of his mind, uh, to say the least. Uh, obviously against Panama in Glendale, he had that magnificent tackle followed up with great service and a, a good finish by Walker Zimmerman. Uh, played pretty well against Costa Rica here out of Aya Stadium as well. Uh, just a very poised player, you know, um, who obviously showcases 
his ethic, uh, his worth ethic on the field and off the field, just a very professional for, you know, for being only 24 years of age, I think he has a, obviously a really bright future ahead of him. Uh, you know, Burhalter obviously rates him highly. We'll see if he's able to get himself in that final 23 for the U.S. men's national team's friendlies in March. Yeah, I mean, we were both there. We witnessed him play at right wing back, but then he also kind of transitioned into that holding midfield position, and then he was back at right wing back. It was an interesting hybrid role, almost playing with three in the back, and then him being part of uh, central midfield as a second holding player, and then bombing out wide to you know be a high winger as he would kind of get up and down that line with his right wing back responsibilities. I thought it was a kind of a harebrained scheme by Greg Berhalter and hopefully something we can see more of in the future. I mean, he was running all over the place and everyone in the crowd loved it. Every single touch was oohed and odd and you know, that was that was cool to see. You know, you you sit there in that stadium, you know, we covered the team locally, but also this was, you know, the national team inside that stadium and to have a player that's gone through you know, a, a local college in the area at Cal, and then playing at Burlingame Dragons, playing for the affiliate as well, I think Reno, for some extended period of time, and also for this team, and, you know, being the right back of this side, the industrial way of, of Nick Lima, it sounds like a great book that someone could write, but it's a, it's a, it's a really cool thing to see. I agree, Charles. I think that's one of his many pluses is that, you know, Nick Lima is a very versa versatile player on the field, right? He can play you left back. He can shift over to your right back position. He can also now, as we were able to tell, he can also play that six, right? That hybrid, just very versatile player. Um, and, you know, during his early days with Cal, he also played as a striker, so. We'll have to have Kevin Grimes on sometime to, to chat with him about about that because you know for all of you tactical geeks out there that are watching this show when you see a right back play holding mid and then play as a right winger you know in in that <laughs> kind of in that phase it's you're just like wait what what position are you playing like are you are you playing in that one or are you playing in that one or are you playing in that one and so for all of the the folks that really care about base position you know we'll have to see if we can get Kevin Grimes as college coach to, on to to really speak about Nick and you know, maybe even have Nick on himself one of these days. Yeah, that'd be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so let's transition to talking about the jersey as well a little bit. What do you think? <laughs> well, yeah, my first initial take on the jersey was that it reminded me a lot of like a 20, or sorry, 2006 East Bay catalog, mm -hmm. mass production type of jersey. You went there, huh? No, I, I went there. Yeah. It, it initially like instantly brought those type of vibes. Now looking at it a little bit more, you know, it's it's not it's not so bad. It has some sort of character, you know, it has that earthquakes feel to it with the little chevrons on on the upper side and, you know, pretty sleek. Still missing the sponsor, right? But I think it'll do. I like the rollout. I thought the video that the team produced with the players, you know, hanging out in it, you know, having a couple bicycle kicks in it, walking around town in it. I thought that was cool. I know there's some criticism out there about the kit. I think we should just kind of let things happen for the meantime and well, think, you know see where it goes. And people will always criticize a certain <laughs> kit, you know. It's it's not always going to be perfect for everyone, but I think uh, I think it'll do. It'll do for the Matias Almeida era. Not a bad kit to start off with. And they still have the white one, the the away kit, which I really like. And so that's kind of the gist of our show here. But before we wrap up, we want to invite you guys to ask us some questions on Twitter and, uh, you know, let us know what you'd like to have answered here on our program because we're going to have a whole segment dedicated to you guys, the fans, and folks that reach out on Twitter. Yeah, just go ahead and leave your questions down below. I know I've been doing this uh, for years now on Periscope. I like to answer, I like to hear from you guys. We'd like to hear from you guys. It makes the show that much more engaging, that much more interesting. So please just go ahead and leave your questions down below. Or you can also find us on Twitter at Black and Azul. And you can also just dump us your questions there. We're gonna make this show 
a little more interesting <laughs> in the weeks to come. I know this week we were kind of low on the content, low on the talking points, just because we weren't able to watch the game against LAFC. It's a preseason, and you know the good, the fluff of of the season is is still yet to come. You know we have to wait. We're gonna obviously have some discussions. Things are not gonna be all that great times between you and I. We're gonna get into some heated debates and we're gonna have a couple of guests here as well, hopefully in, in the coming months. But you know, I'm glad we're, we're getting this thing going. We got this thing going. Uh, you know, you guys are tuning in hopefully and you know, just let us know what you think down below as well. And don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the, the bell. Ding, 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 ding. Thanks, guys. I'm Charles. I'm Joel. 